People have been predicting the end of the world for thousands of years. Whether it was the Mayans predicting the end in 2012, or Christians waiting for the rapture as described in Revelations, humanity is fascinated with the end of times. Even as recently as 2002, the Messiah Foundation International predicted the world will end in 2026 from an asteroid impact. But that isn't the only prediction slated for 2026 that could end the world as we know it. And this prediction comes from an unlikely oracle. It comes from Star Trek. As crazy as that sounds, it's true. Star Trek chose the year 2026 as the year Earth would start World War III. We fought three world wars that almost destroyed us. Whole generations were nearly wiped out. Writers from Star Trek's original series were less than two decades removed from World War II, so the idea that there would be a third one wasn't a far-off notion. If it were any other television show, people wouldn't give it much thought. But Star Trek has been credited with predicting the creation of incredible things that would end up coming true. From Uhura's Bluetooth earpiece to Starfleet communicators, which we would end up calling cell phones. And of course, the computer, which today we call Siri, Cortana, and OK Google. Even the iPad and 3D printing replicators were all imagined on Star Trek way before their time. And if Star Trek did predict World War III, it's right around the corner and a few things have come to light that tell us Star Trek may be a whole lot better at predicting the future than any of us may want. So buckle your seatbelts and get ready for a wild ride because if we're right, this is one Star Trek prediction no one wants coming true, except maybe the Klingons. Wrong us, shall we not revenge? Please take a moment now to subscribe and give us a thumbs up to let us know you want more amazing theories from your favorite shows. Also, click the notification bell to never miss an episode because YouTube has a short memory. And make sure you stay tuned to the end to see how to get this awesome Star Trek Zephram Cochran graphic design from the amazing artists at MixTease.com. In Star Trek lore, World War III is described as a devastating nuclear conflict that would eventually result in the destruction of major world cities and governments, as well as the deaths of 600 million people after 27 years. Earth's Third World War, nuclear weapons accounted for 600 million casualties. But 10 years later, in 2063, Zephram Cochran would leap into warp speed and our Vulcan friends would inspire a new hope for humanity. So if Star Trek has it right, what could spark World War III? The Earth today is a boiling cauldron of social, political, and economical upheaval, and we've come up with a theory that we think will knock your socks off. But first, let's get back to the beginning. The specific action that starts World War III isn't mentioned in Star Trek, but it is believed that Colonel Philip Green and his eco-terrorism group started it in 2026. But since we know the likelihood of there being a Colonel Green alive today waiting to be the next Hitler is slim to none, we have to look at other similarities. Also, Earth's history in Star Trek had eugenics wars in the 1990s that pit gene-altered superhumans against world governments. While not totally clear, some believe these eugenics wars led to the eco-terrorism groups in 2026. Eugenics, or the idea of breeding out lesser desired human qualities were still prevalent in the minds of Star Trek writers in 1966 when the episode Space Seed was written about Khan and his group of superhumans. Hitler and the Nazis had used eugenics to support the extermination of entire races only a couple decades earlier. Eugenics ultimately failed as a science in the 1930s and 40s, but those writers had lived through it. The more interesting aspect of Khan and his group is that they had also been genetically altered. And that's where things start to get interesting. Star Trek may have been wrong about the eugenics wars, but they were right about gene editing. The Human Genome Project started successfully mapping human genes in 1990, and the CRISPR principles of gene editing were discovered in 1993. Star Trek successfully guessed that we'd have the ability to alter people's genes in the 1990s, and they were right. In 1996, Dolly the Sheep was cloned, and it shocked the world. Cloning was stuff of science fiction. The question everyone wanted to know is, would humans be next? Also, where do you ethically draw the line when it comes to altering human genes? 
The line on human cloning was drawn very early. The United States Congress started voting to ensure cloning was illegal as early as 1998, and by 2018, more than 70 countries had banned human cloning. Gene editing, on the other hand, was more of a gray area. Gene therapy used to treat or prevent disease, maybe. Altering the genes of embryos to enhance or change a baby's genetics? No way. It would be 20 years after Dolly before an attempt at gene editing an embryo would go public again. But this time it was human. A scientist in China had used CRISPR technology to edit the genes of embryos and have them transferred into women in hopes they would develop into babies and be born. There was one success, and it was a woman who had twin girls. Two beautiful little Chinese girls. Did they end up being superhumans as a result of his fiddling? No, apparently the doctor was attempting to remove the possibility for the babies to become HIV positive. The Chinese government threw the man in prison and said what he did was an abomination. But the scientist also claimed the Chinese government had supplied the funding for his research. Was China secretly altering genes and this doctor was punished for going public? Then in 2018, researchers cloned monkeys successfully for the first time, making the leap to humans even closer. And that's right, you guessed it. That also happened in China. I've been saying China, 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 China. So what if Star Trek was on the right path correctly predicting gene splicing and human modification? How does this get us to World War III? If you are going to have a world war, you are going to need powerful countries in that world duking it out against each other. In today's world, most people would agree the three most powerful countries are the United States, China, and Russia. It is no secret that the US doesn't get along with China or Russia very well, which isn't surprising considering China's desire to move ahead of the US, whatever it takes, and Russia delighting in watching America tear itself apart socially. These world powers have something very important in common. Any one of them could completely destroy the planet with nuclear weapons. While unlikely that any government would want to rule over a nuclear decimated planet, Star Trek did refer to the time during World War III as the, the post-atomic post horror. horror. But let's get back to that in a moment. First, let's focus on China. Forget for a second all that human gene editing and monkey cloning, or even the fact that our recent global pandemic came from there, which some suggest was also modified in a lab. Let's take a look at the Made in China 2025 plan. In 2015, the Chinese government committed to becoming a worldwide technology-intensive powerhouse. This plan, which China hopes will leapfrog them ahead of all other countries and into the position of lone world power, would be complete only a year before Star Trek's World War III would begin. China is also determined to have the world's most powerful navy. They've also created man-made islands in South China Sea shipping lanes, which one-third of the world's trade passes through. As a result, the United States would commit to keeping those lanes open. Then add China's aggressive stance in the region toward Taiwan, Hong Kong, Tibet, India, and Australia, and tensions are hotter than they've ever been before. If China were to take control of the region in order to control global shipping, tensions between them and the US would be equivalent to the time of the Cuba Missile Crisis, which was between the US and Russia. This is where we go back to Colonel Philip Green and his eco-terrorists. In Star Trek lore, Green's eco-terrorists killed 37 million people through nuclear bombing cities. The science fiction fans in us want to theorize that China has been secretly cloning and gene-altering humans since the early 2000s, and now those humans have grown up and by 2026 decided they wanted to take over the human race, like Khan, and yeah, that's not it. Fun but not realistic. So this is what really might happen. Since the fall of the Soviet Union in 1990, there has been an incredible fear about nuclear weapon security. In 1968, the US, Russia, UK, France, and China all signed the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, which governs nuclear weapons possession. Since then, four countries ignored the treaty and built their own bombs. Israel, India, Pakistan, and North Korea. 
Russia managed to pull together its nuclear arsenal after the fall of the Soviet Union, but there is great fear that North Korea could sell one of its warheads for the right price, and Pakistan has a radical element within its military with ties to terrorist groups. This is likely how World War III would begin. With Pakistan and North Korea both geographically close to China, like Green's eco-terrorist group, a terrorist organization could release a nuclear weapon against Chinese assets in an effort to make it look like an attack from the United States. With tensions already at the breaking point, war could begin. According to Star Trek history, the Eastern Coalition fought against the United States of America and the European Union. Could this Eastern Coalition be China and Russia, or perhaps a combination of countries on the Asian continent? The Star Trek history also goes on to say that the Eastern Coalition used drugs to control their military. China is a major source of precursor chemicals necessary for the production of cocaine, heroin, and methamphetamines, and serves as a major transit route for Southeastern Asian heroin bound for international drug markets. Still not convinced? Then listen to Nostradamus. Remember when we said he'd make the Star Trek prediction stronger? The 16th century oracle said this about World War III. In the city of God, there will be a great thunder. Two brothers are torn apart by chaos while the fortress endures. The great leader will succumb. The third big war will begin when the big city is burning. Is the big thunder and brothers torn apart by chaos the detonation of a nuclear warhead? Is the great leader the president of China? He is literally known as Great Leader Xi. But the last line is most telling. The third big war will begin when the big city is burning. Could that be Beijing? And following that, does the Eastern coalitions attack the West? Doubting Nostradamus? Everything is up for interpretation, but he eerily seems to have predicted the coming of Adolf Hitler, the dropping of nuclear bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and perhaps even the Kennedy assassination. When all is said and done, I suppose all we can do is wait and see. The possibility that Star Trek could have predicted the start of World War III is unsettling at best. But if it's true, then the good news is the future may be bright with a unified Earth, warp engines, and a humanity playing among the stars. Do you think it's possible Star Trek predicted World War III? Let's talk about it in the comments below. Also, check out this Star Trek-inspired Zephram Cochran commemorative graphic design at Mixtees.com and get 20% off your purchase by using coupon code THEPOPCAST. The link is in the description below. Don't want the show to end? Become a PopCast member by hitting the join button to get exclusive content including special member live streams, Discord privileges, behind the scenes access, and so much more. Click join and let's hang out. Also, after you subscribe here, make sure you head over and subscribe to the PopCast Unleashed for discussions, updates, clips, and other special videos. Click on the link below. And until next time,